Today, on Commitment to Truth. We seek happiness, we seek holiness, we seek wisdom, right, in so many different other vehicles. But the wonderful blessing that God has given mankind is that no matter how difficult relationships become in a local church, it will inevitably make you holy. Welcome to Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Each week, Pastor Cedric Brown and the pastoral team at Commitment Church strive to draw you into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we begin a series titled, Let's Re-Engage. Many churches have had a very difficult last two years, especially with COVID-19 rendering gatherings difficult to impossible. And once we regathered, it has been a challenge to feel close to one another. Because we are the body of Christ, we were made to be connected to each other. There is no time like now to begin to restore that connectedness that makes us the hands and feet of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Cedric, lead pastor of Commitment Church, with today's message. But one thing in, in, in particular that I want to highlight as it relates to spiritual growth is our next step training that we have for our adults and our youth. And it's a eight step uh, spiritual, uh, if you would, uh, training and development uh, process. And we just want to encourage you to get a part, uh, get involved in that and be a part of that. That is from new members class to a one-on-one -on -one discipleship. And we could talk a little bit about that because one-on-one -on -one discipleship um, it is scheduled to be six weeks of lesson, 16 weeks of lesson. But it can go on until Jesus comes back in some context, you know, because uh, that time of, of, of doing the lesson may turn into a real life moment mm -hmm. that you need to just deal with some things and pray with each other, cry with each other. But it's, it's, it's one of the sweetest times, I believe, um, and sweetest gifts God has given us in the process. And it is for ladies and guys, but lady with lady, you know, gal with gal, to be a uh, guy with guys, excuse me, guy with gal, uh, to be able to develop one-on-one -on -one relationships. And, and those one-on-one -on -one relationships go a long way, especially when uh, times get tough and intense, that you hope that you've built a healthy relationship during that time together, that you can call on that sister when you need her. Mm -hmm. uh, makes sense? Right, I mean, you, you've all matriculated sweet. through. I think we've all, yes, we've yes, all we uh, had Disciple, disciple learns, no, mm -hmm. disciple leads. Yeah. And it has been a blessing. I think I got fired the first time because my first disciple, we, we did it for two years, so I think that was a bit much. But, <laughs> but it's like, really, yeah, you do have really to complete the time. lessons. Yeah. <laughs> you, you need know, some theology yeah, in there, it's too. A, but it's a sweet time of bonding. <laughs> yeah. You did too. I was yeah, like, I what are you, like, what are you doing? doing? It's how long you going to be. <laughs> That's funny. So can you do this with me? Open your Bibles again to Titus. Titus chapter 2. And there, there's a couple of uh, points I want to just give you today as we head down the home stretch. <clears throat> so everything that we just described to you, um, I want to kind of capture it in three simple points in, in Titus chapter 2, verses uh, 1 through 5. It says, and, and specifically for the ladies, verses 3 through 5, but I'm going to read it in full context. It says, but, I, but as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. That's what we're talking about, sound doctrine. Okay? Older men are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, in perseverance. Verse 3, older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husband, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Here's three simple uh, points I'd like to bring out to you. The first one is found in verse 3, is that our women's ministry should teach and model for our women to have reverent behavior. Reverent behavior. 
This word reverent means this, is to act like a sacred person, to be holy and an honorable person. It's to be reverent women, holy women that are after God's heart, holy women that are pursuing Jesus with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. First, model it, teach it, instruct it, or teach it, but also model it. In everything that we do, it should be reproducing women who are reverent and women who are after the heart of God. Uh, secondly, you find in verse number four, we're to teach and model for our women unconditional love. It's interesting that the scripture says to, uh, to us, uh, or to you specifically ladies, encourage the young women to love their husbands and to love their children. It's like, wait a minute. I guess maybe some of you could say, I can get the love your husband part. You know, because every now and then he kind of, you know, rubs me the wrong way. But, but he also says, love your children. And this word love is an adjective. And it's almost like saying, when you see your husband, when you speak about your husband, the adjective about your husband should describe love. Because this word love is an adjective. Interesting enough. Love your husband. Teach them. Encourage them to speak about their husbands in a loving way. Speak about your children in a loving way. Listen, I know there's times, moms, you may get together and be like, you know, my kids are driving me crazy. They, they, I don't know what's wrong with them. And, and there's some things that you probably won't want to repeat in public. And there's some things about your husband. You, you get around other ladies. Well, you know, he's such a... Another adjective may come out of your mouth. But what the scriptures are saying is that, you know what, ladies who have gone before, who cycled before you, you should be reaching back and you should be instructing that, you know what, yes, it will be difficult sometimes to love your husband, but love him still. Speak highly of him. Speak loves, uh, uh, adjectives of love over him and about him. No matter how difficult a season you're in right now, speak adjectives of love about your husband. Yes, your children could be driving you crazy and bonkers because they are shifting and, and disrupting your life and your emotions and etc. It is very easy to defer to speaking adjectives of unsacred thoughts over your children. Very easy. And why is this important? I think because so many times, mothers, wives, you love really, really hard. You love extremely hard. And if that love is not reciprocated back, it's like, shut down. <laughs> love is on pause today. The way you acting right now, man, love is on pause today. Kids, the way you treat me right now, you disrespected me and I almost died for you. I gave my life for you. I, I gave everything. I put my career on hold for you. Uh, you don't understand. Right, right. List goes on and on. And you acting, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, that's the realism, right? They, they grow up and don't say thank you and the whole nine yards. And it's very easy to say, I ain't loving you right now. You, you don't. I don't feel like loving you right now. And you may have some choice words. But the text is saying, no, no, ladies, encourage each other to love your husband when they become unlovable. Love your children when they become unlovable. Speak adjectives of love about your husband. Speak adjectives of love about your children. First, be reverent. And this reverence, or this reverent way of living leads to a person who walks in love. Even when it's difficult to love. The last point is this, found in verse 5. We're to teach and model for our women balanced home lives. 
Listen, you, you, you may be a stay-at-home mom or you may be a corporate executive. You may be someone who is in the marketplace and you're, you, you're busy both in the home, outside of home. Still find balance. Still find balance. There's a responsibility of balance in Christ, for Christ, for your family, for yourself, so you can continue to do what you do long term and in a healthy manner. Make sense? So there's about three words that describes this balance that I want to bring out to you in verse five. Be sensible. You know what this word sensible means? Be sane. Because <laughs> sometimes you may want to act insane. You know, it also means this, curbing one's desires and impulses. Curbing one's desires and one's impulses. There's, there's, ladies, you know, you're historically created by God to be a little bit more emotionally engaged than we are as guys. Uh, it says, curb your desires and your impulses. That's balance. Don't react impulsively, then it creates an imbalance. The next key word is pure. It means to be modest. Again, modesty, right? If, if, if one tries to pursue life in an unmodest way, right, what it does ultimately is create imbalance. Modesty. Modesty. The last word is be kind. It's interesting that God has to remind one to be kind. But this word, be kind, means this, to be pleasant, to be agreeable, to be joyful. That no matter how rocky, frustrating it gets with your husband, with your children, in life, man, seek to be pleasant, seek to be agreeable, seek to let the joy of the Lord to always be your strength. Not, not your husband, not your children, not any other created thing to be what brings you joy. Keeps you balanced. Amen? Reverent behavior, unconditional love, balanced lives. That's what we're trying to do through our women's ministry. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense? Thank you for joining us for today's message from Commitment to Truth. We'll continue with the second part of the message right after this. Life is like an orchestra. We have the string, woodwind, brass, and percussion sections. We are all attempting to follow God's lead as our conductor while remaining in sync with each other. Instinctively, we find ourselves seeking the position of first chair. None of us are ever really skillful enough to sit there, yet we try. But who is the first chair meant for? You can purchase this book and others by Cedric Brown at cedricbrown.com. Thank you again for joining us for today's message from Commitment to Truth. We now return for the second half of our message. Here's our last question. And uh, how then can uh, the women who are here, the, the women that are watching, the women who are part of our church, de- thinking about being a part of our church, how, c- how can they get engaged uh, with the women's ministry? Anybody want to start us off? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, definitely. Um, getting involved. I mean, coming out to the different events and um, activities that we have. Um, it's, you know, sometimes as women, we start to complain, oh, I don't have time for myself, or oh, I don't have a time to go out, or this and that, but then there are activities here that we um, come together for you, you know, to enjoy time out, enjoy time to grow and learn more, and even build relationships so that you don't feel alone. Hmm. You know, um, it's important to come together and talk. And also, um, moms with little ones, you know, bring them with you. You know, we'll figure it out together. I have three of my own, so, you know, just get them involved. They learn from us. They observe us, and we're their great role model. Yeah, like we were even talking, um, part of the going, growing, and going is like we have CTC, Commitment to Community, least of these. Mm Uh, also nestled in there, you had the Project Shine Your Light that last, uh, yesterday, right? right? They did uh, something for mothers on Mother's Day. Uh, one sometimes could say, well, I can't do it because it's my kids, right? What would you say t- to that? 
No, definitely just bring them with you. Um, they actually have a great time serving mm -hmm. and learning from us. The, a lot of times there's activities even for the children. So while you're serving, they're just having fun, you know, in, in the children activities as well. So it's just a great time for for us moms and even our children together to continue to grow. Amen. Amen. And, and for instance, uh, so I would maybe... Uh, sum it all up and how do you get involved it, or is to participate. Just do, just just jump in, right? And so can you imagine, Ronaldo, that if there were more ladies participating and sending out cards to people, right? right? Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, I have asked that before. You know, I don't do it consistently and I need to do that more often, but to reach out to the women, you know, when there's a, and actually I did do that, you know, once with uh, asking someone, you know, this person's having a birthday, can you send them a card? Because we hadn't seen them in yeah. a while. Yeah. yeah. You know, to let them know yeah. that, you know, we miss you. So, yeah. You know, so that they yeah. can. And you've been out. sending cards out to children, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. really yeah. enjoy it because she always sends balloons. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Yeah. yeah. And it goes back to if you don't have your address, you have your contact information, we can't, we, we can't, we can't even serve you in that way. So, again, at the end, the ladies will have a clipboard to get your, your name, your information. Vandy. I think Vandy will have, have that information as well. And as you serve with each other, you, you build relationships. I want to, can I share something right quick? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put my buddy on, on, on blast. But Marisol, <laughs> when I first met Marisol, I was scared to death of Marisol. I was scared to death of her. But um, she was so, what do you call it? The person that everything's in order. Mm -hmm. uh, organized or? She, organized. And, and that's not my strong suit at all. She was very organized. <laughs> and I had asked her, we were doing a, a teen luncheon, etiquette luncheon. And I, I asked Marisol and she, you know, she took the round and she did excellent. As we were serving together, our relationship grew. Hmm. She, she, she became my um, admin. Mm -hmm. So as you serve with people, you get to know them more. Mm. You, and you can see, you know what, we got more alike, like you yeah. said earlier, than, than there's different. Have yeah. you been through that? Well, you, I've been through that too. And we had a, 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 a taco night, Friday night, and one of our, our sisters, is, she just got a new job and it was really hairy, but she met another sister that worked in the medical field that had done whatever this program is, epic program, and encouraged her in what she was doing. Mm. So it, it, it all, it's like yeah. a great yeah. big circle. Yeah, yeah, God has a unique way of of answering prayers. You know, when you come together, you, you realize that, wow, this person that if I didn't come to this meeting or this fellowship or this outing, I wouldn't even, uh, that, that prayer request or that need that I may have had would not, it would go unfulfilled. Because the beautiful thing that God does within the body of Christ is use people. He uses people many times to answer your prayers. He answers, but we're all vehicles. We're all uh, workmen and work women in his vineyard. And he uses us strategically to care for one another. So if, there's, if you're disconnected, many times the very thing you're longing for, uh, you may not even receive because of being so isolated and disconnected. Make sense? So, so that being said, though, there are some specific things that I saw in your handout, like uh, events coordinator that is needed, mm -hmm. all right? Somebody to come and help with different events and from start to, yeah, finish. to start to finish, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, whatever you all are dreaming to do that they help you uh, get that done. Then you have administrative assistant, <clears throat> social media coordinator, someone to help uh, just get the word out and and po make all the posts that you all are so creatively creating and uh, getting out there, which is so cool. And then also audio video. Yeah. Uh, audio video, believe it or not, we need women uh, who are skilled in, well, I say skilled. You may not know nothing about it, but you can grow into it. Not, not actually need to be skilled in it today. If you are, praise the Lord. If you're not, and you may say, hey, this is something I want to do. Why is that important? For instance, let's say that there's a women's event, women's only event, right? And the only uh, people you have in audio video are what? Men. Men. And then let's say that your event is getting very intimate and personal, and you have this dude back there on AV, and he's just listening, right? I mean, or it will, it will cause ladies not to, to share openly because there's men in the room. Follow me? And, and same way, flip the coin. If there's a men event, men's event, we need men serving in those, 
key areas so that men can be transparent. Make sense? So audio video, believe it or not, that's a very, very crucial uh, ministry for ladies to be uh, uh, greatly involved in. Make sense? Now, that being said, uh, another wonderful tool of growth to help you go is our next step training, which I alluded to earlier. Uh, just for you to know that the first step in our next step training, uh, spiritual growth training, is our discovering commitment classes. All right. So our discovery classes and it has three phases, discovering commitment, discovering your faith and discovering your purpose. And we drill down on those three things to help you, uh, if you would, uh, assimilate and become a part of the vision of commitment. And I teach the first part, the discovering commitment. We talk about the history, how we started to where we're headed. And we have one of these um, uh, seminars, we're calling it, because it's going to be a full day that we're going to cover all three. We used to do them all in different days. But the next one will be on the 21st, Saturday the 21st, beginning at 9 a.m. And it's going to be a full day. So we're going to provide continental breakfast. And we encourage you to bring a, a, a lunch, you know, because so, we'll take a lunch break and things like that. But it's a really, really good time to start getting engaged from the jump street. And, and that would allow you to take that first step in your spiritual growth is uh, becoming part of Commitment Church. So if you've been testing the waters, if you're here physically, if you're watching, uh, this is a great way to now start uh, fully engaging what God is doing here at Commitment. Again, it's going to be Saturday, the 21st, starting at 9 a.m., and I'll teach the first session. Then Larry Lewis, who oversees the Equip Ministry, he will then uh, take over uh, uh, session two and session three. Again, Saturday, the 21st at um, 9 a.m. Thank you again for listening to our series, Let's Re-Engage, From Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Ephesians 4, 14 through 16 says, As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into Him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. As the fitted and held together body that we are, it is critical that we not only reconnect with one another, but serve together for the furthering of the gospel, so that more and more can hear of Christ and be saved. If you want to listen to the previous messages in this series, or if you want to hear messages from other series, visit Commitment Church on YouTube or Pastor Cedric Brown on Spotify, Pandora, or other podcast providers. You can also visit us on our website, commitmentchurch.org. And if you live in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey area, we would love to see you in person as well. You can attend any of our services by visiting us at 2 Berlin Road South, Lindenwald, New Jersey, 08021. Thank you again for listening, and have a blessed and wonderful day.